what up everybody welcome back and in this video we're going to work on kinetics some particle kinetics using normal and tangential coordinates or really just using newton's second law with normal and tangential coordinates and in this problem we've got a mass here a block that weighs two kilograms or has a mass of two kilograms and it's sliding along this path and hits this ramp here at point a it has a velocity of two meters per second and we can neglect friction and the size of the block uh, just to make sure we don't have to worry about aerodynamics and all that other crap. But here, what we want to find, or what this problem is asking for, is to find the speed or the velocity of this particle and the normal force that's exerted by the floor or the ground here on the particle as a function of theta. And here's this theta right here, starting with theta equals zero is this vertical line here. So. Uh, we're going to use nt coordinates, and as you can imagine, our approach that we're going to use is very popular. One, draw that schematic or the FBD at some location, at some location theta, okay? At some location theta, and really this velocity at A of 2 meters per second is the velocity uh, is e of the block is two meters per second at theta equals zero degrees. So that's also what this means right here, because at A, theta equals zero degrees. Then two, we're gonna apply Newton's second law, Newton second law with NT components. And, uh, um, and then we're gonna solve, we're gonna solve using solve using some kinematic relationships and and uh, um, and and calculus and math some math okay and and this this is really typical for a lot of dynamics problems in kinetics you know you're going to use kinetics to set up your equations of motions or your newton's second law you'll end up with two equations and and then you'll have to use some kinematics um, you know position velocity acceleration relationships and math to solve for whatever it is that you need to find. Okay, so here, let's illustrate with how that works. So I'm gonna draw the free body diagram of this block at some location theta, so which is really just a drawing of, of this business right here, okay? So here, this first thing that I'm gonna do is draw a free body diagram. Bam, like this right here. And I got my block here, got my straight edge. So my block at that location might look like, boom. Boom. Oh, this may be a little bit exaggerated, but it's all good. It's like I've really zoomed in on this block, right? So here, bam, here's this block. Here's this block right here. And, and if you've seen any of my other videos on this thing, you know that I like to draw an inertial side and an external force side. So here, this will be my uh, external force side. And this, this block right here, let's see, I need to copy that. Oh, bear with me. Bam, edit, paste, yes. Okay, but I don't need that other part. Anyway, it's all good. And then I want to move this down a little bit. Oh, and I want to move this back. Oh, oh, screw that. We don't need to, we don't have to worry about that line anyway. All right, and so here, I want to draw my free body diagram of this thing. Bam, like this right here. Uh, the left side will represent my external force diagram. This right side will be my inertial diagram. So this will be my external force diagram here. And this will be my in inertial diagram. But before I do that, I need to establish a coordinate system. Okay, And this coordinate system that I'm going to use is an NT coordinate system. And this normal and tangential is on the particle itself. So there's, there's no reference, if you will. The reference is the particle itself here. And starting at the center, uh, my normal always points towards the center of curvature. So which in this case is towards that cross over here. So this, my positive normal direction, I always want to establish that as towards the center of curvature. And my tangential is towards the direction of increasing path. So here, my particle is tangent to the path. So here it would be at this instant here, you know, my particle is moving from A up the ramp. So this is why I call this plus T. And my inertial terms are going to have the exact same thing. Plus N and plus T. Plus N plus T here. 
And now I want my external forces. And so my external forces are going to be, bam, right here. This would be the, the weight of my block here. And then I'll have a normal force on the block. I'll say N and I'll call that B for the block. I don't want, you know, I like to use N subscript something because I, you know, when you write your equation, you just don't want to get it confused with the units of Newtons or something later on. So here, and I think these are the only external forces acting on my block because we can neglect friction in this problem here. So that's pretty good. Another thing that's important to note is that, you know, based on that previous drawing here, we also know that this angle right here is theta. Yay, which makes this angle theta as well. So that's, that's something nice to know while we're getting going. And then the inertial terms, no matter what you do, you want to always just draw them in the positive um, coordinate directions right here. So, so the tangential component, I'll just draw this way, M-A-T. And here I will draw M-A-N. And since we're doing a 2D problem and we've broken up into um, to components already, you know, I, 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 I'm going to offend all you purists out here and not do the vector notation, okay, just because we're doing all 2D anyway. It's not that big of a deal, but you know, I'll give my, if, if I need to give a, a, a velocity answer, I'll give a direction and a magnitude when I do it, so, or an acceleration, whatever, okay? So here, I have, I have my drawings here. It, it looks great, you know, I, these are, this is the, you know, you mess up here, you've messed up the whole problem, but you've got to make sure you do this right. And so the next thing we want to do is to apply the equations of motion, EOM, which is Newton's second law. Okay, Newton's second law right here, and bam, right? And, and what I want is, I want my, my drawing represents my equation. So here you know that Newton's second law is this sum of the forces equal to ma. We're going to break this up into nt components. So for the n direction, I'm going to say for the n direction, sum of the forces in the n is equal to ma n. My plus n direction is this way here, and so the equation that represents this, this component of F equals ma would be minus W cosine of theta plus nB equals man, okay? That looks pretty good. That looks pretty tame, if you will. And then if I look in the tangential direction, some of the forces in T, Bam is equal to M A T here, and it just just for all just to make sure we're clear here. This is my W. Um, this would be that W sine theta, and this right here is W cos theta. Okay, so here I would have in the in the tangential direction minus W sine theta. Uh, is and then there's no other forces and B is only working in the normal direction is equal to M a T and those are my two equations right here and hopefully some of them have velocity terms and some of them have uh, have uh, uh, well they have that normal force and theta here this in normal components this is also M V squared over Rho yay where Rho is the radius of curvature and here this is M D V dt and now all we have to do is start looking at each one of these one by one okay so if you got this you've got the hard part and and really everything now is just kinematics and calculus to to solve for this and so we're going to start with uh, um let's start let's for our part three here when we solve this we're gonna let's start with the tangential component tangential direction, tangential direction. And the reason I'm starting with the tangential direction is because, you know, I, I'm in, in this equation here, I only have velocities and, uh, and theta. You know, I don't have to worry about this normal force here, uh, whereas, you know, in this other equation, in the, in the normal component, I have this as an unknown and this as an unknown here, whereas here I only have one unknown, essentially, okay? So starting with the tangential direction, if I look at this right here, uh, let's see, I'm going to substitute for W. W is equal to mass times gravity. So here I'll have minus mg uh, sine theta equals m dv dt. Okay? And, and the thing I, I want to eliminate is time. I want to eliminate time here because I have position, 
but I have really no information on time. And so how can I eliminate time from this relationship? And so you got to go back to your kinematics. So here I'll put this in purple. Recall your kinematics. And, and really the thing to remember is the relationship between velocity, position, and time, which is that velocity is equal to ds dt right here. Yes, ds dt. And we also know that if I could just rearrange this, dt is equal to ds. Oops. Right here, ds over v. Okay. And so if I if I substitute into that right here, then I would just get mv dv over uh, ds. Okay. Just from algebra, straight up, right here. And and, and this hopefully looks familiar to you, this MVDV, that should, that's going to turn into like kinetic energy and things. And, and you can see if I multiply this to DS, that's the principle of work and energy. But that's, that's for later, okay? Uh, here, so here I have this MG D, sine theta. Another thing that's convenient here is, in fact, the information about the mass I don't even need here. I got mass cancels out, so that's great. So I have this G minus G sine theta is equal to V dV over DS. And now you, and you see the position variable is not ds, but our position variable is theta, okay? It's this theta right here, that theta. And so we need to figure out how do we have v dv. We want to bring this ds over here, but we have to make sure that we integrate over theta, this angle that's changing. And so really the other thing, the relationship that we have is that small deformations or here, this path ds, here's this radius. Okay, or the radius of curvature rho, okay, whatever you want to use. And then here I have this increment d theta. And for small angles, I have ds is equal to r d theta, okay, moving in a circular path. So I, if, I, if I bring this over here, so I have minus g sine theta is equal to, v, oops, let's put, don't forget the ds right here, ds equals v dv. And I also have here minus g sine theta r d theta and in fact i'll just let me move the r because r is a constant because our path is a circular path it's constant that should have been a d theta right here d theta and here's this v dv and now you know bust out my integral signs boom boom right here g and r are constants that's why i can put them on the outside right here I, i'm integrating over theta Theta goes from zero or at A, zero to theta. And then the velocity, the bounds from the velocity at when theta was zero, we had this was two meters per second, all the way to some velocity as a function of theta. So some open integral-ish kind of thing, I guess, is the way I could describe it. But it's just the velocity moving along the path, okay? So we've done that here.